Welcome back to my channel, fellow gardeners. Today I want to talk about the amaryllis plant. Now the beautiful thing about the amaryllis, now it's December, this is the time in Kenya that we start having it to flower. So here I have my amaryllis, I'm getting already some buds, and I want to talk about, first of all, in two parts. One, we're going to talk about the general uh, story of the amaryllis and then part two will be about propagation so welcome back my name is Alice and I'm the red soil gardener now we were talking about the amaryllis plant which always comes out during the festive season now the thing is, is that in Nairobi is that we have um, the amaryllis that always starts around November and again is mine is starting to flower as we see here. I've got one, two, three, three shoots already coming out. Now the beautiful thing about these amaryllis is that when they are shooting its flower stalk, the flower stalk is always at the edge of the uh, of the foliage and it just makes it more interesting and so in a few days time my top one here which I've estimated about five flowers will actually go in bloom. Now the thing about the amaryllis is that in Europe you do buy them in flower centers the big bulb. Now the thing about those big bulbs I've never seen them in Kenya so our little bulbs are quite small I mean these here are baby bulbs but at the same time, we don't get those enormous varieties. But again, is that once your amaryllis, amaryllis does mature, is that what happens is that uh, basically it will produce the same flowers and it will actually, no matter whether our bulbs are smaller, I think it's just a different variety, but they will produce your flowers. Now, what I want to show you is different techniques of actually propagating. So now the first thing is that we'll look at the seed production. Last year my amaryllis did flower and it did actually the plant did go into seed production and so I was like I wonder what the seeds looked like. So what I did is that I actually took it like this is actually the pod on the flowers so each of these pods were flowers and what happened is I just let it dry and then it popped open. Now once it popped open is within that pod I had all these, I mean this is not all of it, but I managed to get some seeds like these and this is what you would propagate if you went into seed production. The thing is it is very labor intensive to do actually seed prop, uh, production if you want to go into seed production only because is that you'll have to hand pollinate the flowers and then allow it to go into seed production. So with seed production it will take you also a while for the plant to uh, for the seeds to germinate so I have never tried that before but for those who do feel adventurous you do get seeds and you can uh, you can germinate it and eventually you will get your amaryllis plant once you do put it on your seed on your uh, once you do sow it you will see shoots coming out and they do sort of resemble like little piece uh, little um uh, stalks of grass and then you know that your amaryllis uh, seeds have actually propagated. Now the other sort of propagation that you can do is the one that I know is actually what happens with the amaryllis plant is it does have offshoots and if you look here this is the mother plant and it's produced all these lovely little offshoots and these are tiny ones here on the side and like this particular one is actually grown and it is a big one. So basically when you do want to do um, a propagation of an amaryllis plant is that in the end it's just a matter of actually these are a bit mature offshoots is actually just try to pull them out with a bit of rooting. Rooting is important and then with that 
plant with the rooting. There's another one. And this last one is just to make sure we divide it with the rooting. Here we go. So here we have, out of that amaryllis um, stalk, I have four rootings. Now, the thing about the amaryllis plant is, first of all, is the bulbs. Now, with these bulbs, the bigger the bulb, the more flowers you will get. But these little babies here are quite immature. The second thing about the amaryllis plant is that when you do plant it, it's always advised to keep at least a third of the size of the bulb above the soil. And the last thing is that with the amaryllis plant, it does like to be uh, pot bound, meaning that basically if you do have your amaryllis and you want to pot it, is you should actually get um, a container that is actually slightly larger, maybe an inch around, slightly larger than the bulb, but don't put your amaryllis in an enormous uh, pot and have it right in the middle. It just loves to feel comfortable. It likes the coziness of being pot bound. Now, what am I going to do with these is I'm actually going to plant them in here, all of them, and wait for it to mature. And once the bulbs do get bigger, then I will transplant it into individual uh, pots and pots that will make it pot bound. And then we wait and see if we do get our flower stalk. And in the end is um, I will get my amaryllis plant um, flower. So here I'm going to just, uh, I've already soaked this plant. And what I'll do is actually remove some of these rooting just like that. And then I'm going to go in here and place it. Just cover it like that. We'll add some more soil as we go along. The reason why I'm not removing the leaves is basically is as the as the plant photosynthesizes with through the leaves is it's feeding nutrients to the bulbs. And so by removing the leaves too prematurely, what happens is, is that the bulb doesn't receive the nutrients. And that means it'll be, if it does mature by next year, I may not get enough blooms on that particular amaryllis. So I am going to actually keep those leaves so that it can actually feed the bulb so I'm just going to put it here like this. And then this last one in here. And we can actually follow this up. Now, if you do look at our previous um, video is with Amaryllis, is that once you do have the flowering season, as in Kenya, we have it in... November through to January is in Europe you will also have your flowering season for the festive season but what you could do in order for you to get more blooms during the year is there is a technique called forced um, dormancy where you allow the plant to actually take a rest and go into a dormant stage and then once it's about, um, let's say, 8 to 12 weeks, but once the, the plant is, um, has been in dormancy, you remove it and put it back into a sunny place, and then it'll start its leaf production, and then you'll get your flower shoot. So do, do watch that uh, episode, and you'll understand that you can actually control the, the blooms throughout the year. So here is my amaryllis, which I've planted. And basically what I've done is ensured that the bulbs are only submerged to about two thirds. What we'll do with this one is we'll wait for it to mature and then I will put it in individual um, 
pots. Now, the last technique that I actually did try, and we'll have to have a look and see how successful. Now, this must have been about two weeks ago when I decided that I'd really need to do that amaryllis plant because this one was going into flower production. So I was looking at different techniques, whereas with the offsets, I'm used to this sort of technique. But then they started talking about chipping, which is basically taking the amaryllis bulb and dividing it into sections, and each section will actually start rooting. So I'm going to show you what I did with this particular plant. So about maybe about 10 days ago, I had my amaryllis bulb, which I'll pull out here. So this is my amaryllis bulb. So what I did is I wanted to try the chipping technique, which is basically taking your bulb and dividing it into four sections as seen here. So basically the whole technique is once you do have your bulb and you have the base rooting here of the plant, is what you do is minimize the rooting at the base. Now, once you've minimized the rooting at the base, you divide your bulb into four, as, I, as seen here. I cut it horizontally and across like that. And then after you do that, is you try to separate the sections because what you don't want is that as it grows, as it starts to propagate, is that there is a tendency that it will join up again. So basically, all you do is, I ziplocked it here like this, just put it around like that, a technique that I <laughs> discovered. So what happens is now, as we've seen here, is this section has started producing its root and also if you look here inside is you will see in the plant here it's actually producing its rooting so basically if i look inside here <laughs> there's a lot of rooting happening inside the plant which means to me that actually this technique is working. So I'm going to place it back like this so it doesn't join up. Once it's secured here, I'm going to place it back into my vermiculite, which is just moist and not soggy, just like that. And then as we know, we will just cover it just like that so that we're not touching the crown, so a third of it is actually above the medium. Now, what I did, just to finish it off, because I was, I was a bit worried that um, it wouldn't be able to be rooting by the time I do this uh, episode. So again, it's like what we've done in the past. I have my, I have my little dome, and all I did is actually take the dome and secure it above. Now the whole idea about this dome is to actually have a conserve the humidity and the heat for the propagation to work. It's a very, very simple technique. And what I did is actually took a water bottle and I cut the base off. So with this, no matter what you're propagating, you could actually have this on top and it will keep the humidity in, intact and cause a sort of greenhouse effect. And once in a while you just clean, remove the moisture and then return it to the top. Now what we'll do with this one particularly, because I'm really intrigued, as soon as um, in two, three weeks time, I will again open it up and see what sort of rooting I have and I will post it on Instagram. So fellow gardeners, so we've learnt one thing is the chipping technique. Another technique is actually working with the offsets, which we've done here, which we're waiting for them to mature. And then the last technique is actually waiting for the plant to go into 
um, waiting for the plant to go into seed production as the uh, pods pop open and then you could actually germinate their leaves once the leaves are dry. So thank you so much for um, joining me on this episode. Don't forget to like, to share and also to press that notification button so that you're always informed when we upload. Also, don't forget to subscribe, introduce your friends and your family, everyone onto our channel. And don't forget, we are on Instagram, we are on Facebook, and do leave your comments on either any of those sites. I'm always there ready to uh, answer any of your queries. And thank you so much, and happy festive season, and look after your amaryllis. Thank you, bye.